Thanks so much, Mr. Chairman. Um, curious about the title of this hearing. The title of the hearing is Abortion Bans and Interstate Travel for Care After Dobbs. This um, seems like an attempt to mislead, seriously mislead, the American people into thinking that one or more states are out there um, criminalizing or otherwise uh, utilizing the coercive force of the state uh, to prohibit travel to obtain an abortion in another state. I'm not aware of a single state that's doing that. Not one. I'm not aware of a single state that's planning to do it. Now, <clears throat> the only thing I can think of that it could relate to is minors, the transportation of minors, underage children, across state lines in order to get an abortion, which leads me to wonder whether this is really just about the, the sort of the pro-abortion uh, activist community and lobby wanting to allow traffickers and abusers and abortion providers to transport children across state lines without their parents' knowledge or consent in order to get an abortion. Now, it's a, a violation of basic standards of decency. It's a violation of uh, parental rights in order to do this. But this is not what the title of the hearing seems to suggest, which is that states are out there criminalizing interstate travel uh, uh, by a woman uh, who wants to get an abortion in another state. Not one state is doing that. Not one state has, is considering legislation to do that. Now, don't just take my word for it on, on this, on what this is really about. That is the interstate transportation of minors, of children, without their parents' knowledge or consent, so that they can get a, an abortion. Planned Parenthood employees have themselves confirmed it. An adult male uh, working undercover as an investigator with Project Veritas in Missouri told Planned Parenthood employees that he was seeking an abortion for a 13-year-old girl without her parents' knowledge or consent. According to court filings, after acknowledging that the abortion would be uh, illegal in that circumstance in Missouri, the Planned Parenthood employees offered to help transport this 13-year-old girl to another Planned Parenthood in Kansas, assuring the man that the parents would not find out. They would never know. The managing director said, quote, we never tell parents anything. She's an adult in our clinics, close quote. She's 13. When the reporter asked how to transport the 13-year-old girl to Kansas for an abortion, the managing director said that this was, quote, not their first rodeo. They're going to know exactly how to handle that, close quote. The managing director went so far as to write a doctor's note to the child's school saying, quote, we can cut off our letterhead so it doesn't even say where the child's going. Uh, and offered to arrange transportation for the child, get the child to Kansas, and even pay for the abortion, lodging, and other services so that the 13-year-old girl could undergo an abortion, a, uh, a significant surgical medical procedure, one that in some circumstances, uh, uh, can present complications that themselves can be life-threatening, all without her parents' knowledge or consent. This is appalling. Dr. Scupp, do you believe it's ethical to conduct an elective, non-emergency surgical procedure of any kind on, on a minor, on a child, without notifying, and in fact, um, without notifying and obtaining the, the consent of the parents, and in fact, actively concealing the fact from the parents that the procedure is happening? No, it's a bedrock standard of medical care that we do not commit a procedure of any type upon a minor. They are not felt to be able to give informed consent by themselves, and we do need the parents' consent. Okay. Now, how, how dangerous, so it's not just any adult that needs to consent. It needs to be the parent, unless parental rights have been terminated or something like that, right? Yeah, if there's a legal guardian. Right. Now, how dangerous is it to conceal a surgical procedure, perhaps an abortion, for example, from parents, the parents of a teenage girl who might experience complications from the abortion? In this particular instance, every person I believe in this room would want to know if their child was in that so sort of a circumstance, 
and, and be able to come alongside their child to provide support. This child needs mental health care. We don't know who the abuser is. Is it someone in that family? Does this child need to be removed from that family? This needs to be reported to Child Protective Services, to law enforcement. As a civil society, we should want whoever impregnated that girl, which is by definition statutory rape, to be prosecuted. Um, we should want to stop this from ever occurring. The abortion will not fix the girl. It will not restore her innocence. It will merely add trauma to trauma. And um, we know that mental health complications are quite frequent, particularly in this sort of a situation. And particularly if her parents don't know what happened and she experiences complications, that could be a problem. Now, I was shocked to read the story of, uh, uh, that, that you linked uh, in your testimony of an Idaho woman and her adult son were charged with kidnapping his 15-year-old girlfriend when they forced her to travel to, to Oregon for an abortion without her parents' permission. The son has also been charged with rape of a minor and producing sexually explicit material involving a minor. Are these the type of people who some at this hearing want to protect with their opposition to parental notification laws? We we hear so much discussion about this heartbreaking situation, and yet in the same, um, when we turn the page and see that there are those who are willing to facilitate the transport of these minors without their parents, we recognize that that's being used as a tool, that there's really very little care for that child in that tragic situation. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I've got one small follow-up question, if I could ask one more. Sure, sure. go ahead. Thank you. Of course. Professor Sneed. Uh, Tell me what the Supreme Court held in, in Troxel versus Granville regarding parental rights and how that might apply here to the transportation of a minor to another state without the parent's knowledge or consent for the child to undergo a major surgical procedure, one that in many circumstances can carry substantial risks for the child's health. It seems clear that that's not permissible under the relevant precedent. Uh, and, and, and why is it not per permissible? What is it that we know about parental rights from Troxel? Parental rights are, are sacrosanct and essential, and they're essential bedrock principle of the rights that citizens of the United States, people in the United States, enjoy. Thank you. 